Today, we're gonna be taking all of my Jurassic World Dominion figures and we're gonna be putting them from biggest over here all the way to smallest down here. This figure right here is the largest Dominion figure that I have. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure and it is super long. It's probably three or four feet in length, but it still has some really cool features. You can even open and close the mouth and twist the head around too. So let's put this dinosaur on the very far left as the biggest dinosaur. Let's see, what super colossal figure is next? It's a tough call, but I think the Giganotosaurus might be the next largest. This figure is huge, has a classic green coloring, the awesome super sharp spine, and the really cool teeth. These are pretty unique. Let's set this super colossal Giganotosaurus down right next to the Dreadnoughtus figure. These are our two largest figures. Next up has got to be our super colossal T-Rex with the new brown and black coloring. You won't see this on older Jurassic World figurines. This one is super cool. Let's put this right next to our giant Giganotosaurus figure. Next is this awesome Atrociraptor figure. This one is the white with two different tones of brown striping along its back and sides. And unlike the other super colossal figures we've seen so far, the teeth are actually fully inside the mouth compared to the other figures we've seen so far where the teeth are on kind of like the outside of the mouth. All right, there we go. Let's move on to the next biggest, which is this tall Brachiosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. Let me stand it up. Now this dinosaur is a lot taller than these other dinosaurs right here, but its body is a bit smaller and it's just shorter in size overall. So that's why I'm putting it over here. But it's got some pretty cool detailing, the blue coloring around its head. And next up in size is this giant Apatosaurus figure. Check out the size difference between this one and the Brachiosaurus over here. It's a little bit shorter, it's still standing on all four legs and it has a really long neck but instead of going up super tall like that one, this one kind of sticks out forward this more. Oh, yeah. All right, now we're moving on to our slightly smaller figurines. We're gonna start with this T-Rex, which has the identical coloring as the super colossal figure right over there. This is a really cool T-Rex. I like the features on this one, and this one has a ginormous head compared to older Jurassic World T-Rexes. Right over here, we've got the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This one has some really cool orange brown coloring. It has a lot more detail than many of the other Jurassic World T-Rexes. It even has marbled eyes. Check out all that texture. And these figures are super poseable too, which is an awesome feature. Next, we've got this thrashing Giganotosaurus figure in the same coloring as the super colossal figure over here. They look pretty similar. This one's quite a bit smaller, although it's still probably around a foot in length from tail to head. So let's set this down right next to the T-Rex figure. All right, what do we go with next here? I think next is this Allosaurus figure. This figure is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex's and the Giganotosaurus figure here, but it is a lot larger than a lot of my other Allosaurus figures. Plus it has a battle damage feature right on its side that you can open and close. Let's get this standing right next to the Giganotosaurus. The next up in size is the Therizinosaurus figurine, which was really cool in the Dominion movie. So we're gonna set this down right next to the Allosaurus figure and check out those huge claws on its hand and the really long neck with the big face at the very top. We've got another herbivore dinosaur next in size here. This is the Stegosaurus with some pretty cool coloring. It's got the brown, some lighter tan green, and then the clay red at the very top. <laughs> All right, let's set it down next to the Therizinosaurus. Look at those spikes. They're a little bit taller than the Therizinosaurus, although if this was standing up all the way, it would definitely be a lot taller. Here is the Yang Chuanosaurus figure. This, I don't think was in the new Jurassic World Dominion movie, but it came out as part of the toy line. It's got some really cool coloring. It's got an action that lets you move the neck around in a lifelike way. And you know what? I think it is actually a little bit bigger than the Stegosaurus. So let's shift the Stegosaurus over and put this dinosaur right there. Next is a really interesting looking dinosaur. This is the Ampelosaurus. It's got the clay red coloring with the brown top, a super long neck, and it stands on four legs. Let's put this right next to the Stegosaurus figure. 
Hmm, I can't quite tell which one is the next largest, but I'm gonna go with the Rajasaurus figure in the blue and gray coloring. And it's got that cool little spike right at the top of its head. Now let's set it right next to the Ampelosaurus. Let's see if it stands up. I think its legs are kind of broken. So that'll have to do. Here is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus figure. Once again, it has pretty similar coloring as the Super Colossal figure right here. And this one comes with sound effects as well. It's pretty cool, so let's set this right next to the Rajasaurus figure. The next in size, I think, is this Pyroraptor figurine. This is the basic edition, but it still has the cool fiery red coloring and the black on its tail, on its legs, and a little bit on its head too. Let's set them down right here. <laughs> and very close in size to the Pyroraptor is this basic Atrociraptor figure in the same coloring as the super colossal figure that we have back here. So let's go down all the way to the end and set them on the table. All right, now the figures are getting a little bit smaller. I think next up is the Mega Raptor figure in the bright red and blue and a little bit of tan right along its face. And this figure is cool because it actually has an action when you press down on its back, it has a chomping action. Here is, I believe it's pronounced the Dryptosaurus. And a cool new feature that Mattel is putting on these toys is this little slide. It's like a thing that swings back and forth and it actually swings their head back and forth and opens their mouth too, which is pretty cool. Now let's set it down right next to the Mega Raptor. Next is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. This one comes in the gray, dark blue with the yellow striping. And like all the Hammond Collection figures, is super poseable and really cool. Let's put this down right at the end. Here we've got another Hammond Collection figurine. This is the Parasaurolophus. It's got some pretty bright coloring and of course is super poseable and adjustable as well. Next is the bright Ichthyovenator. It looks kind of like a Spinosaurus because it has the big spine on its back and a long and narrow snout, but it has a super bright and much larger tail and is a lot smaller than a Spinosaurus, I think. So let's go ahead and put this down right next to the Parasaurolophus. Here we've got a huge Cynoceratops figurine with some bright yellow coloring around its all black eyes and the yellow coloring right on its tail as well. And like many of these other figures, it has the action that when you press down on its back, it lifts up its head. Let's see, next up in size is this Triceratops figure in the green and brown coloring. Let's put this at the very end. Oh, you know what? It looks like we're out of space at the very end though. So let's create a new row in the front right up here. We've got another Triceratops figure next, but this one is from the Hammond collection. So compared to this other Triceratops figure right here, you can see that this one has a lot more detailing and differencing in the color, because this one basically has two different colors. This one kind of fades into all sorts of other different colors. And of course, is a lot more poseable as well. Next up is the Iguanodon figurine in the tan and darker brown on top with the striping. Let's set down this Iguanodon right next to the Triceratops. Now we're down to the really small ones. So let's start with this brand new one that I bought. This is the Geniodectes Cirrus Dinosaur. All right, this dinosaur is pretty brightly colored. It's got a dark gray body, but then it has this super bright coloring along its leg, its neck, its face, and the super bright red on top. And this is the Extreme Battle Damage Edition, so you can click it open and closed with that button on the top. All right, let's put this Geniodectes down right next to the Iguanodon. We've got a few more extreme battle damage dinosaurs right here that are the same size. This first one is a Velociraptor and I've also got an Atrociraptor figure. And they both have that button on the top that activates the battle damage on both sides of its body. Let's set these down next in line. I've got a couple more Atrociraptor figures right here. These are the non-battle damage versions. I've got an orange one with the tan striping and then of course the white with brown striping, just like the giant super colossal version. Let's get this first Atrociraptor down and the second one. 
here is another Pyroraptor. This is a pretty small figure, and this one actually has the extreme battle damage on the side as well. Check that out, it's pretty cool. It's got the same classic red and black coloring along its body. And let's set it down right next to the white Atrociraptor. This next figure, I believe, is called the Moros Intrepidus. It's got some pretty unique green and orange coloring. It's got the light green eyes, some pretty cool feathering and detailing all over its body. And let's set it down as the next smallest dinosaur. All right, now we're getting down to the real small dinosaurs. These are both Dimetrodons, and their spines make them look really tall, but actually their bodies are really short. This first brown Dimetrodon is a normal one, doesn't have any special features, so we'll put that next in line. But this other Dimetrodon actually has battle damage on the side, like many of these other small figures, which is pretty cool. So let's set that down right there. And here are our last two dinosaurs. We've got a Miragaya dinosaur with the huge spikes on the side, and we've also got a Therizinosaurus figure, which is really small, but still has the giant claws and the classic coloring. All right, let's set these down. Looks like we have just enough space. I'm showing you all of my T-Rex figures from biggest to smallest, so let's jump in. My first biggest T-Rex is this super colossal T-Rex from Jurassic World. This T-Rex has a bright orange body with a darker brown top. And just like all my super colossal figures, it can swallow miniature dinosaurs down its throat to the stomach compartment that you can open it up. My next biggest T-Rex is this super colossal Jurassic Park T-Rex. This is actually from Jurassic World Dominion. It has a much darker body. It's got black on top brown on the sides and a lighter underbelly. It's got a huge jaw and this figure can also swallow miniature dinosaurs and open them up in the stomach compartment. Next up, we've got a Jurassic Park T-Rex. I believe this T-Rex was called the Bull T-Rex. And this figure too can swallow miniature dinosaurs and other small stuff and you can empty it out in the stomach compartment. Right on top here, we've got the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure has some of the coolest coloring out of all the T-Rexes that I have, and it is remarkably adjustable too. You can bend the legs in all different directions, at the knees, at the ankles, you can bend the arms, you can twist the neck, and you can open the mouth, of course. Next, I've got this huge Jurassic World T-Rex with this ginormous head. This figure has the black top and brown sides, just like the super colossal T-Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. And this T-Rex can be controlled by moving the tail around. Back here, we've got, I believe what is called the Terran T-Rex or something like that. The special feature on this T-Rex is the tearing action with its mouth. It swings its head around and closes it at the same time. And it's got a secondary action button to swing the tail around too. This T-Rex, also from Jurassic World, is a stomping T-Rex. When you twist the tail, it stomps its legs up and down. And it has those cool sound effects too. Plus, as you notice with the cage, it actually breaks free from the cage just by pressing the button on its back. That is pretty cool. Here we've got another Jurassic Park T-Rex. So this is a very old figure. It's got the rubber body. And with this T-Rex figure, you can move the tail to swing the head back and forth. So it's not as advanced as the new Jurassic World T-Rexes, but it's still pretty cool. We've got tons more T-Rexes to go. Let's keep digging. This huge T-Rex with similar coloring as the first super colossal T-Rex that we saw has some pretty cool functions. When you swing the tail, it swings its head back and forth, and it has a roar function when you move the tail, and a chomping action, all just by moving the tail. That is pretty cool. 
Over here, we've got a darker gray colored T-Rex with some brown on the top. This is also by Jurassic World. And you can twist the neck around, you can open the jaw, there's a button on top, activate the chomping, and you can swivel the tail around and move the legs as well. I think this one's bigger than the rest of them. This T-Rex has one of my favorite functions. It's actually battery operated, so that when you press the button on its tail, it opens its mouth and shakes. It actually has a motor in it to do that, which is pretty cool. Plus, you can move the tail around to swing its neck around to look. That's really cool. This T-Rex was custom colored a long time ago. It's got the bright green on the side, and it's got like camo colors and black all over the rest of its body with the lighter underbelly. And just like that bright orange T-Rex we saw just a second ago, you can control chomping and roaring with this figure just by moving the tail around. Next up, we've got a light brown T-Rex from Jurassic World. This is very similar in function to the darker gray figure that we just saw. It has the chomping button on the top of its head. You can move its neck around and you can adjust the rest of its body parts too. This is the extreme battle damage T-Rex from Jurassic World. It's got some different patterning along the top of its body compared to the rest of them. But the most important part is the battle damage on both sides that you can press this button up top to turn it on and off. Plus, the rest of the figure is very adjustable as well. Here's another T-Rex with some battle damage on it. It doesn't have the extreme battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off, but it does have these slashes all over its body, even its legs and its tail too. The rest of the figure is very adjustable, and of course, the button at the top of the head for chomping. Next up, we've got another custom colored T-Rex. This one is a super bright red color. It looks kind of like fire in my opinion. And it's got the black on the top and the orange striping right along the sides. And this figure is adjustable just like many of the other figures that I've shown so far too. Next up, we've got another bright orange T-Rex with the brown top. This figure is fully adjustable throughout its body and it's got the chomp button at the top of its head. Here's one of my favorite T-Rexes. This is a dark green color, and I'm not sure that I have any other green colored T-Rexes in my collection, so this one's pretty special to me. It's also got the black detailing along the top, and its body is fully adjustable with the legs, tail, arms, and neck, and there's the button at the top of its head for chomping. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going, we still got quite a few T-Rexes to go. This T-Rex is from the old Jurassic World toy line. It's got a rubberized neck, so it's a bit flexible there, as well as the rubberized tail. And it has a chomping action with the tail. Now we're getting down to some slightly smaller T-Rex figures. This is a Jurassic World T-Rex, and it is actually a hybrid. It's got some spikes on the top of its head that you can push down and activate them by pressing the button on the back. Here is another custom colored T-Rex from the old Jurassic World toy line. It is bright red in color with black spots all over and the yellow underbelly. And it also has a chomping action on its back. Here's another similar T-Rex from the old Jurassic World toy line. This T-Rex is light tan in color all over its body. It's a little bit lighter on its belly. And just like the other two that we just saw, it has the chomping action button on its back. All right, this next T-Rex is a little bit smaller. This is a Jurassic Park T-Rex. I believe it's a juvenile T-Rex and it's actually got some battle damage right on the side. Next up, we've got a new Jurassic World Dominion figure. This, I believe, is the Sound Surge T-Rex. It's pretty small in size and you have to open and close its jaw manually, but it does come with some awesome sound effects. we've got some model T-Rexes in here. I'm not sure what brand this is from, and you can't move any of the limbs or the jaw on this figure, but it's got the dark brown coloring. It's got some interesting shading and black stripes all over its body. Here is another dark brown model T-Rex, but on this one, you can open and close its jaw. It's also got the black stripes and the lighter underbelly too. Check out that little bit of yellow right there on its nose. It's interesting. 
Here is a dark green model T-Rex. This one, you cannot move any of its body parts. So it is standing in this awesome roaring pose, just like I'm sure you've seen in the movies. Here is a bright orange or red model T-Rex. With this figure, you can open and close the jaw, check out all those little teeth. And this figure looks quite a bit more muscular than a lot of the T-Rexes, I will say. Here is a super bright model T-Rex. It's got the bright blue along the top of its body, as well as the gold stripes. It's got a gray underbelly and some teal coloring right along its face. Here is a darker model T-Rex. I love the attention to detail with the skin. It's like you can see all these little bumps all over its body. It's got the black stripes as well. And on this model, you can open and close its mouth. Here is a super striped T-Rex. This has some really bold black stripes right along the top of its body, while the rest of its body is this soft tan or orange color. And it's got some super bright yellow eyes too. And unfortunately, you cannot move any of the body parts on this model. Next up, we've got a light green colored T-Rex with some darker shading and detailing along its body. You can see those bumps right along its spine. And this figure does not have any moving parts either. So it is stuck in this roaring pose. We've got some even smaller T-Rexes in here. Here is a Jurassic World T-Rex that is pretty small. It's probably seven inches from tail to the nose and it fits easily in my hand. It's got some battle damage on the side and the tail controls the jaw and face. We've actually got a few more Jurassic World T-Rexes just like that last one. This first one is actually a hybrid T-Rex. It is a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus, as you can tell by these huge frills on the front. It's still got the battle damage on the side and it's got this reflective gold along the top of its body and the very front too. And this T-Rex has a bright green body. It's got the battle damage on the side still and some darker detailing right along its face. This T-Rex figure is from Jurassic Park. So this is a super old figure. It's got some interesting purple detailing along the top. It's got a tan body. And actually this figure has a unique feature on the leg. You can actually bend it like that because it is a broken leg for this T-Rex. Right over here, we've got another juvenile T-Rex. This one has a bandage on its leg and the restraint on its mouth. So it can't bite people. It is super bright green with some cool detailing along the back and is very adjustable with all of its limbs too. This baby T-Rex is also from Jurassic World. It is bright green or yellow in color with some detailing along the top. And when you pull down on the tail, it chomps its jaws shut. All right, we've got some super small T-Rexes in here. I believe this one is from Jurassic World. I'm not sure actually but they are both brown in color. This one is very adjustable. You can even move the tail around, you can move the legs and open and close the jaw. But this figure doesn't have any moving parts actually. And our last two T-Rexes of this collection from biggest to smallest. We've got a bright blue T-Rex with black stripes and no movable body parts. And this T-Rex here you can move the legs, you can twist the tail around and you can open and close the jaw too. Today we're going to be checking out a collection of some of my scariest carnivore dinosaurs from biggest to smallest and we're going to be putting them up over here to check them out side by side. So let's get started with the biggest one, the Indominus Rex. This figure is absolutely massive. It is larger than a lot of my T-Rex figures and this is actually the battle damage edition. See it turns red when you press the button, which is really cool. Plus. The rest of the body is very adjustable. You can move all its arms, its legs, you can adjust its neck, and it even has a button on its tail to activate the jaw. So let's go ahead and set the Indominus Rex down at the edge right over here. Moving on, let's see what the next largest dinosaur is. Probably the Giganotosaurus. 
This is another super large figure. It's got the green body with the black detailing all over, and it has a few actions actually as well. The first action is a button on the top of its tail that activates the swinging action with its entire upper torso. And there's also a button beneath its tail to activate just the jaw alone. All right, let's put this Giganotosaurus down right next to the Indominus Rex. And look at the size difference even between those two as well. That's pretty crazy. All right, next up, let's see. I bet it's one of the T-Rexes and it's probably the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure has some awesome coloring and shading and is the most poseable out of basically all my T-Rex figures. And an interesting feature of the Hammond collection is the realistic parts of its mouth. It's got these flaps on its side that are rubber, so they actually move around pretty realistically. The tongue is also rubberized as well. Let's put this Hammond collection T-Rex right next to the Giganotosaurus. All right, I bet the next biggest one is this other T-Rex figure. This is a Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. It's got some brand new coloring. It's got the orange brown color and some gray detailing on the top. And this is actually an extreme battle damage T-Rex. You can press the button to reveal the damage on its side, just like that Indominus Rex over there. So since this is the next biggest T-Rex, let's put it down right next to the Hammond Collection T-Rex. All right, looking pretty good so far. Next up in size is this Allosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This is the largest Allosaurus figure that I have, and it actually has some battle damage on the side. Let me show you that. Right here, you see it's hidden completely right now, but then you can click it down to reveal the ribs, and then you can even lift those up to reveal the intestines inside. This is really cool, and the only Allosaurus that I have that can do that. Plus, it has an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Let's put this Allosaurus down right next to the extreme battle damage T-Rex. Let's see, what's next biggest in size? I think it might be this Endoraptor right here. This thing's pretty large. It's got the all black body with the iconic gold stripe down its side. And this one actually has a few actions. You can see there's a little button on its tail right there to activate its arms. And there's a button at the bottom of its tail to activate its jaw too. All right, let's set this Endoraptor down next to the Allosaurus. That Allosaurus is quite a bit larger. All right, let's keep digging. I think this Carnotaurus might be the next largest size. It's got some battle damage on its nose and it is the darker brown version of the Carnotaurus. And it has the action button on its tail to activate the jaw as well. Let's set it down. You know what, I think it might be larger than the Endoraptor, so let's go ahead and have them switch places real quick. There we go, that's looking better. Over here we've got another Carnotaurus figure, but this one is smaller than the one that I just showed you, and it is a bit more brightly colored. It's a brighter red, it has the light underbelly, and then the black detailing on the top, and it has an action button on its back instead of its tail to activate the jaw. All right, let's set it down right next to the Endoraptor. Let's see, I think the next biggest carnivore in this collection is a Tarbosaurus. And this is definitely a scary looking carnivore. Check out that red underneath its chin and those red eyes too. And all those spikes, those are massive. Let's put this down right next to the Carnotaurus. Check out all those dinosaurs we have so far. Super cool. All right, let's see, next in size, maybe this other Allosaurus figure right here. This Allosaurus has a slide lever action on its back, so you get a bunch of different sound effects with it. You can get a growl all the way to a roar. All right, let's set this dinosaur down right next to the Tarbosaurus, and it is quite a bit smaller than the Tarbosaurus. Next up, I think, is the Giganotosaurus. This is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus, so a whole lot smaller than the one that we saw earlier but it has the same coloring and detailing. And it has sound effects that you can hear that you can activate by pressing this button up top. All right, let's set it down right next to the Allosaurus. They're actually pretty similar in size, so it might be a little hard to tell who's larger, but I think it's still the Allosaurus. 
Next, I think, is a Pyroraptor figure. This is the new Jurassic World Dominion version, and it is the basic version as well, so you can't open and close the jaw, but you can move the arms, the legs, and the tail a bit. Let's set this down right next to the smaller Giganotosaurus figure. <laughs> Next up in size in the Scary Carnivore Collection is the Mega Raptor. This thing has some super bright coloring. You can tell that it is a feathered dinosaur. You can see some feathers on its legs, on its tail, on its arms. It's pretty cool. So let's set this down right next to the Mega Raptor. <laughs> next up is this slightly smaller Endoraptor. A bit smaller than the earlier version that we saw, but it has the same coloring, and this one actually does not have any action buttons, but it is super poseable. Let's put this down next to the Mega Raptor. Next in size, we've got the basic Atrociraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This has the white body with the brown striping all over and those bright red eyes. Let's put this down next to the smaller Endoraptor. Here is an Amber Collection Velociraptor. I can't remember which Velociraptor this is, but it has the brown coloring with the darker striping all over its body. Looks like we're running out of room on the edge there, so we're gonna create a new row right up in front here. Next is this much smaller Indominus Rex figure. This is an earlier version of the Indominus Rex compared to this one way over here on the edge, and look at that size difference too. And actually, I think this smaller Indominus Rex has a slightly more blue tone than the super large one. It's pretty cool. Let's put this down right next to the Amber Collection Velociraptor. For the next smallest scary carnivore, I've actually got this brand new one from Jurassic World Dominion. This one I believe is pronounced Aquilnosaurus. Let's open it up. So this is a pretty interesting looking dinosaur and it's actually an extreme battle damage edition that you can see on the sides. Just click this button and there you go, you reveal the damage underneath. Plus you can pose its neck and I think you can even open and close its mouth too. There we go, that's pretty cool. Let's put this down next to the Indominus Rex. The next up in size of scary carnivores is this extreme battle damage Pyroraptor. Just like the dinosaur that we just saw, there's a button on top that activates the battle damage. Plus, the rest of its body is poseable as well. And check out the size difference from this Pyroraptor to this basic Pyroraptor right there. A huge difference in size. Let's put it down right up front here. All right, now we're getting down to the really small ones. Here is a super small Atrociraptor figure. It has the same color as the basic Atrociraptor that we saw earlier, but is a whole lot smaller. So let's put this right next to the Pyroraptor. And I've actually got one more Atrociraptor figure in here with totally different coloring. This one is a bright orange with tan stripes on its body, and it's got some yellow evil looking eyes. So let's put this right next to the smaller Atrociraptor right in front. And it looks like we've got a few Velociraptor figures in here. This first one is Velociraptor Blue with the iconic blue striping down both sides of its body. So let's put Velociraptor Blue right next to the orange Atrociraptor. And this other Velociraptor that I've got in here is a brown and yellow Velociraptor. It's pretty similar to Velociraptor Blue, but different coloring and it's got some reflective green eyes. That's pretty cool. Let's set this one down. And finally, I've got some super small Jurassic World scary carnivore figures in here. Let's put these on the table and check them out one by one. I think the first largest is probably this Baryonyx. I think it's a Baryonyx figure. It's all green in color, so not a whole lot of difference with the coloring, but it's got a decent amount of texturing. Let's put this next to the larger Velociraptor. Next up in size, let's see, I think is probably this Velociraptor figure. This one has two different colors on it, even though it's so small. Oh no, actually three. It's got a pink tongue and the two tones of gray on its body. That's pretty cool. Let's put it down next to the Baryonyx. Next up is the Carnotaurus figure. I got this one pretty recently in a pack and you can actually open and close its mouth. Let's set this one down here. And last of all is this Baryonyx figure that actually came in the same pack as this little Carnotaurus. Let's put them side by side and it is a bit smaller. All right, we're finished.
Today we're going to be checking out some of Jurassic World's most popular dinosaur figures and we're going to be standing them side by side from biggest to smallest right over here. And we're going to get started with the largest ones, the first of which is this giant Indominus Rex figure. This figure is probably almost two feet from the tip of its nose to its tail and it stands over a foot tall and it's got huge arms compared to T-Rex figures and it's got some awesome detailing along the back as well. Let's put this one right on the far corner. The next biggest figure in this collection is this Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure is a little bit bigger than a lot of my other T-Rex figures and it has a ton more detailing on its body. Plus, they made this figure way more adjustable. It has three points of articulation in its torso and its neck, two points of articulation in its tail, can even bend the elbows, and it's just really cool and realistic looking. So let's put this next to the Indominus Rex figure. Let's see, next up is probably this Jurassic World Dominion Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It looks a lot different compared to the Hammond collection. It's a lot darker. This one has marbled eyes. This one has painted yellow eyes. And on this T-Rex figure, its head is ginormous compared to a lot of the other T-Rex figures. And of course, it's got an action button on its tail for the chomping and roaring too. Let's put this right next in line. See now, the Hammond Collection T-Rex is a bit bigger than this normal Dominion T-Rex in terms of height, but this one does have a much larger head, as you can see. All right, what's next? I think this giant Giganotosaurus figure is the next biggest figure. And this Giganotosaurus has two main action buttons. The first swivels its entire torso back and forth, complete with sound effects, and the second button underneath its tail opens and closes its jaw. You know, I think this Giganotosaurus is actually bigger than this T-Rex right here. So let's have them switch places. Next up, let's see, I think it's this T-Rex that is the next largest. I believe this is a Camp Cretaceous Tyrannosaurus Rex and is one of my favorite because of how you can move its neck and its head around to look super lifelike. And this one is definitely a little bit smaller than the Dominion T-Rex. So I think they'll go side by side. Here we've got a big Spinosaurus figure, and in real life, the Spinosaurus is actually the largest carnivore, but in terms of the figure, it's actually a bit smaller than some of these other figures right here. And this figure is actually the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus. So this one's actually pretty hard to find nowadays. And although the spine is a little bit taller than that T-Rex, they're generally around the same size. So we're just gonna put this Spinosaurus right here. Right over here, we've still got another T-Rex figure. This is a Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it is one of the few T-Rexes that I have that is in this really cool camo green color. This one is definitely a little bit smaller than this Spinosaurus right there. Now we're getting down to a little bit smaller figures. I think the next biggest size is the Therizinosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This figure has some huge claws and I think this dinosaur might have the biggest claws out of any dinosaur that I've seen. But interestingly, it is a herbivore dinosaur. And we're gonna set it down right next to the Legacy Collection, T-Rex. The next biggest dinosaur in this collection is the Scorpios Rex, which I'm sure you recognize from Camp Cretaceous season three. This figure has two action buttons. The first is for its jaws and sound effects. And the second is the claw slashing action. It's really cool and a little bit smaller than the Therizinosaurus figure. We're gonna put it down right beside it. Actually, now that they're side by side, I think the Scorpius Rex is a little bigger. So let's have them swap places. All right, next biggest is probably this Carnotaurus figure. I think this is an older Carnotaurus might be from the Fallen Kingdom collection. It has a jaw snapping action right on its back. Let's put this right next to the Therizinosaurus. Next up in terms of the tallest dinosaur, I think is probably this Albertosaurus figure. I actually have a battle damage edition of the Albertosaurus, but this one is just the normal one and you can use its tail to twist its neck around and open and close its jaw. Since we're running out of room on the edge of the table over there, we're gonna start a new row right up front here. 
Next up is the Pyroraptor figure. This is the basic Pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the same awesome coloring, but pretty limited in terms of its movement. Here we've got another Scorpios Rex figure from the Camp Cretaceous collection. This one is actually a lighter green than the other Scorpios Rex. You can see that that one's like mostly black, but this one's got a lighter green on the sides. This figure is a bit smaller than the other Scorpios Rex. And now this Scorpius Rex actually looks a bit bigger than this Pyroraptor figure, so we're gonna have them switch places. Next up is another Giganotosaurus figure. This is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus. As I'm sure you can hear right now, it is a whole lot smaller than this Giganotosaurus figure right here, and a little bit smaller than this Pyroraptor figure. Put them right beside each other. Let's see now, next up, let's go with this Stegosaurus. This is a Jurassic World Dominion Stegosaurus, and I am loving the new color design on this. And with those huge spines on the top, it's a little bit taller than these other dinosaurs, but in terms of size, I'd say it's pretty close. So we're gonna put it right there for now. Right over here, next up in size, is the Ichthyovenator dinosaur from Jurassic World. This is a super bright dinosaur, and we're gonna set it down right next to the Stegosaurus figure. Here is a classic Baryonyx figure with the button on its back to activate its jaw. So why don't we put this dinosaur down as the next in line of the biggest. Over here, we've got the Hammond Collection Triceratops, and this also is quite a new figure that I bought recently. I am loving the texture and design of this, although the coloring is a bit plain, I would say. Let's put this down right next to the Baryonyx figure. For the next up in size, why don't we go with this new Jurassic World Dominion Triceratops figure. Let's open it up. So this figure has a lot of the classic camo green coloring and it's got some clay red brown coloring along the top. So let's set this down right next to the Hammond Collection Triceratops. <laughs> For the next up in size, let's go with this new one that I just bought, the Jurassic World Dino Trackers Coronosaurus figure. Let's get this opened up. All right, here is the new figure. It's obviously an aquatic dinosaur. I think this one came out very recently. And it has a button on its back so you can twist its head back and forth and even open and close its mouth too. Let's set this down right next to the Triceratops. Just a few left. Next up in size is this Ankylosaurus figure with the clay red and brown coloring and tons of spikes on its body. Plus, when you press down on its back, it swings its tail back and forth. This figure right here is an extreme battle damage Velociraptor. You can actually turn the battle damage on and off just with the click of a button. I've also got an extreme battle damage Pyroraptor figure with the same feature on its side. You can click the damage on and off. And let's set that down right next to the Raptor figure. All right, here are our last three. This is an extreme battle damage Dimetrodon figure with that same click action battle damage on both sides. This is also a super bright dinosaur. And we're actually gonna set this down right in front of them in the very front row. And here is what might be the smallest Therizinosaurus figure by Jurassic World that they've made. I'm actually not sure, but this figure is teeny tiny. Let's put this right next to the Dimetrodon. And last of all, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Wow Pods Dilophosaurus figure. Let's get this opened up and let's check it out. Here it is out of the box. So you can see the whole Dilophosaurus face and the frills, and it's actually battery operated. So there's a motion sensor up here that'll turn on these lights. And it might be a bit too bright in here to actually see it, but it kind of changes the color of the Dilophosaurus. And the cool thing about these is that when you get more of these wow pods, you can actually stack them on top of each other and arrange your own way to display them. So we're gonna set this down right in the corner next to the Therizinosaurus figure.
Today on Amazing Dinosaurs, we're going to be checking out a huge collection of apex predators from Jurassic World and lining them up from biggest to smallest. So let's get started right over here with this super colossal T-Rex figure. This figure is featuring some custom gray skin and some bright red eyes, and I love the teeth on this figure. They're a lot darker than a lot of dinosaur teeth. So we're going to put this one at the very left because it is the biggest one of this collection. Our next biggest apex predator in this collection is this super colossal Velociraptor Blue. This giant figure features some dark gray blue skin, it's got the iconic blue stripe running down the sides, and it has some white shorter teeth compared to the T-Rex. Let's set it down right next to the super colossal T-Rex. Alright, let's see. Next up in size is probably this Indominus Rex figure. This figure, although a little bit smaller than the Super Colossal, is one of the biggest predators that I have. And this one is actually the Battle Damage Edition that you can turn on and off with the click of a button. It also has an adjustable head and a button at the end of its tail that activates the jaw. Next up in size, we've got this awesome colored Spinosaurus figure. Now this figure was custom colored, which is why you'll see a lot more detail with the coloring and the shading compared to many of the other figures. Even the teeth are a much dirtier, nastier color, which I love. Looks totally realistic. Let's grab our next dinosaur, which is this huge Pyroraptor figure. Now this figure is actually pretty special because it is battery operated and it responds to you. So let's tap it on the head and see what happens. Look at that. Its eyes change, it's moving around. Looks pretty angry right now. And you can touch its chin as well. It'll respond to you there. It's pretty cool. Check that out. Now its eyes are green, which means it's more friendly. All right, let's set it down right next to the Spinosaurus. Next up in size is one of my proudest dinosaur figures in my entire collection. I actually custom painted this Stomp and Escape T-Rex. It's got some brown on the top, green on the sides, and then the light yellow underbelly as well. This for sure is one of my best repaints and it's next in size, so let's put it down right next to the Pyroraptor. For our next biggest apex predator, we've got another T-Rex figure right here. This one is also in a green color and it also has the black stripes on the top of its body and some on its face as well. And it has a button on the top of its head that you can use to open and close its mouth. Next up in size is actually a vintage figure from Jurassic Park. This is a Utah Raptor figure and it stands almost as tall as the Jurassic World T-Rexes. And this figure, since it's one of the old Jurassic Park ones, it actually has rubber skin, so it feels quite a bit different and looks a bit different too. It's a lot less shiny. Over here is one of my favorite apex predator dinosaurs. This is the Carnotaurus. I love the coloring on this dinosaur and I love the way it looks. It looks kind of like a T-Rex, but it's got some horns on the top of its head and it's got much smaller arms too. This is a totally awesome figure. So let's set it down right next to the Utah Raptor. Up next, let's see, I think it's probably the Carcharodontosaurus figure right here. This figure features a dark blue body with some orange and dark brown detailing, and it has a button on its back that you can press for the chomping action. Let's set this down right next to the Carnotaurus. Next up, let's go with the Albertosaurus figure. And this one is actually a special edition Albertosaurus because it has the battle damage right on the side that you can open and close. You can even move the ribs up and down too. And check that out, it's got some slashes on its body as well. Let's put this next in line. Next in line is an Allosaurus figure. And this figure features a slide lever button on its back to activate roars and to open and close the jaws too. And it's pretty similar inside to the Albertosaurus, so let's put it right next to it. Next, I've got this Baryonyx figure with battle damage featured all over its body. It's got some on its leg, its neck, and there's an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Now it's pretty close in size to an Allosaurus figure, but check out the difference in size between their bodies. The Allosaurus is way bigger. Check it out, I've actually got another Baryonyx figure. This one features the green, dark green, and brown coloring on its body. And it's got a slide lever action on its back to activate the jaw and the sound effects. And this figure is basically the same size as the Baryonyx right next to it. 
check it out. We've got another T-Rex figure. This is the Sound Surge Edition T-Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. So let's set it down right next to the Baryonyx figure. Just a little bit smaller. Over here is a yellow Cryolophosaurus figure. Check out the crown on the top of its head. That's really cool. Plus, with this figure, you can use its tail to move its head around in a real lifelike way. All right, let's set it down next in size. This next figure is a Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green coloring with the black detailing on the top. And like many of the newer figures, it has a slide lever action on its back to activate the jaw and the sound effects. For our next Apex Predator, we've got our first Dilophosaurus figure of this collection. This is an older figure and it features an action when you move the tail, it moves its head back and forth. All right, we're getting down to the much smaller figures. This next figure is another old Jurassic World figure. This one is a T-Rex. It's got the bright green coloring with some battle damage on the side, and you can use the tail to move the head. This next Jurassic World Apex Predator is a Spinosaurus in some crazy coloring. It's got the bright red spine with stripes and the blue body as well. And check it out, there's even a little battle damage on the side too. Yeah. Let's set it down right next to the T-Rex. This figure is the Jurassic World Dominion Extreme Damage Velociraptor. It's got a button on the top of its back that you can use to reveal the battle damage right on the side. Here is another Velociraptor figure. This one is a bit older than the Dominion Velociraptor that we just saw, and it has a soft green body with the darker green on top. <laughs> Next, we've got an Atrociraptor figure that I'm sure you recognize from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. Let's set this down right next to the Velociraptors. <laughs> Our next apex predator is the Dimetrodon dinosaur. This figure features a huge spine running along its back and adjustable limbs and jaw as well. We're gonna set this one up in front of the other line because we're running out of space. So let's go to our final dinosaur, which is a Snap Squad Carnotaurus. Once again, one of my favorite dinosaurs. Let's set this right at the end. checking out my entire collection of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom figures and arranging them from biggest all the way to the smallest. The biggest Fallen Kingdom figure that I have is this super colossal orange and brown T-Rex figure. This figure features some great detailing all over its body and of course the ginormous mouth with the stomach compartment so you can feed it smaller dinosaurs. Let's set this at the very end because this is our biggest dinosaur in the collection. My next biggest Fallen Kingdom figure is this huge Mosasaurus figure. This figure features the dark blue body with texturing all over and you can move the fins and you can open and close the mouth too. Let's set this down right next to our super colossal T-Rex. Next up, we've got the Spinosaurus figure from the Legacy Collection. This is a pretty special dinosaur because this one is pretty hard to find nowadays. It's got the dark green body and the red, white, and green spine. And it has a button at the top of its head to open and close its mouth. And you know what? The Mosasaurus's body is a bit bigger, but the Spinosaurus is taller, so let's have him switch place. Next in size for the Fallen Kingdom figures is this T-Rex figure right here. And this figure actually has some pretty cool features. You can use the tail for a roaring action and for a chomping action too. Check that out. Let's set it down right next to the Mosasaurus. I've got even more T-Rexes in this collection. This is the Battle Damage Edition. It's the same orange color as the first two T-Rexes that we've seen, even the Super Colossal one but this one has the battle damage painting all over its body. So let's set this one down. This next Fallen Kingdom T-Rex is almost identical to the battle damage, except this one does not have the battle damage at all. So this is just a plain good old T-Rex figure. 
Next up, let's see, let's go with the Endoraptor. This is the Grab and Growl Endoraptor. And this figure is quite rare as well. Check it out, it's got a button for its claws, it's got a button for its jaws, and you can use the tail to move its head around. Next up for Fallen Kingdom, we've got a Carnotaurus figure. This figure is a bit smaller than the newer Carnotaurus figures that Jurassic World has released, and its coloring is a bit brighter as well. Plus, it's got a button on its back for the chomping action. This is the Sukomimus figure. There is a yellow version that's newer than this one, but this is part of the Fallen Kingdom collection. And this figure has one action button on its back for the chomping action. Next is this Endoraptor figure. It's a bit smaller than the Grab and Growl version that I've got over there, but it is very poseable and it has the same iconic coloring. For the next in size, why don't we go with this Stegosaurus? Jurassic World has released other Stegosaurus figures, but this is the only one with this teal blue-green coloring. And this figure has an action that when you press down on this spine, it swings its tail back and forth. Next, we've got a Baryonyx figure, and this one is pretty special because it came as part of a pack, and I think it's one of the only Baryonyxes that have this orange on the top of its head. So let's set it down right next to the Stegosaurus. I've also got a Ceratosaurus figure right here. This one is super bright with the yellow, black, and red, and it has an action button on its back to activate the jaw. <laughs> Here is a Metriacanthosaurus figure. It's got the mustard yellow coloring with the dark green on top, and it has the action button on its back, just like the Ceratosaurus to activate its jaw. Next, let's grab this Triceratops figure with the clay red or kind of orangish coloring. It's got the brown on top, and it's got the action button on its back to lift up its head. Now this next dinosaur isn't very tall, but I think it's the next in size. This is a Pteranodon figure, and you can fully extend the wings, and there's a button on its back for the wing flapping action. Next up in size is this Pachycephalosaurus figure. It's got the green body with the clay red coloring and some battle damage that you can open and close on the side. And I've got quite a few of Velociraptor Blue figures from Fallen Kingdom as well. This first one is the Battle Damage Edition. You can see the Battle Damage right there on the side that you can open and close. I've also got the spring-loaded version of Velociraptor Blue. So its legs are spring-loaded so it can launch into the air. And I've also got the normal version of Velociraptor Blue from Fallen Kingdom. The next biggest Fallen Kingdom figure that I have is this bright orange Velociraptor figure. And this figure, just like that other Velociraptor blue figure, is spring-loaded in the legs, so it'll actually jump up into the air. And let's start a new row up front right here since we are out of space in the back. Next up here is this Stigimaloc figure. It's got the clay red coloring with some darker detailing, and it's got the super hard helmet head and the spikes that come out the back too. Next up is this Battle Damage Monolophosaurus figure. It is a soft green color, but it has the Battle Damage right on the side that you can open and close. Next, we've got a tiny Battle Damage Triceratops figure in a bright green color. Check out that Battle Damage that you can just flip open right on the side. And finally, I've got another Pteranodon figure in the same coloring as the bigger Pteranodon in the back. This one, though, actually has battle damage on its back that you can open up. Plus, you can see that its wings are damaged, too. Yeah. <laughs> 
Today we're checking out Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom versus Camp Cretaceous and we're going to be putting them all side by side on this super long table for a size comparison. So let's get started with the biggest ones from Camp Cretaceous. This first one is the super colossal Indominus Rex figure. This figure features some really cool looking teeth. It's got huge claws on its hands. It's got some cool detailing along its whole body, a ton of spikes along its back as well. This one is definitely the biggest and we're gonna put this right here in the Camp Cretaceous line. The next largest is also from Camp Cretaceous, actually. This is Carnotaurus Toro. This is the super colossal figure. And this figure features the classic clay and brown coloring along the body, along with the battle damage right along its nose and the two massive horns as well. Let's put this right next to the Indominus Rex on the Camp Cretaceous line. Unfortunately, Fallen Kingdom does not have any super colossal figures, but we'll get started with the biggest figures that I do have from Fallen Kingdom. This first one is a giant T-Rex, and this one features some pretty cool attack moves. If you move its tail, it lifts its head up for a roar, and if you move the tail downwards, it actually chomps it towards the ground. Plus, you can move it side to side to swivel the head, too. So we're gonna put this first Fallen Kingdom dinosaur right here. All of our Fallen Kingdom dinosaurs will go along the front right here, and Camp Cretaceous will go along the back. Let's go ahead and grab another Fallen Kingdom dinosaur. This is another T-Rex, but this is the Battle Damage Edition. You can see it has a lot of the same coloring along most of its body as the first T-Rex, but it's got some really cool battle damage coloring. You can see some slashes on its neck, on its chin, and all over its body. And it is a little bit smaller than the first T-Rex. So let's set him down right next to it. Moving on to the next largest Camp Cretaceous, we've got the Spinosaurus figure from Camp Cretaceous with the tan coloring. It's got the super long snout and some really big front arms. You'll notice that the arms on a Spinosaurus are a lot larger than on a T-Rex figure. Look how much bigger it is on a Spinosaurus. Now let's go ahead and set this Spinosaurus next in line on the Camp Cretaceous line. Look at that size difference between the super colossal figure and this Spinosaurus. That is a huge difference. Next from Fallen Kingdom, I think the next biggest figure is the Grab and Growl Indoraptor figure. This figure features super long front arms. It's also got a long tail and two attack buttons on its tail. The first activates its claws for slashing back and forth. And the second button activates the jaw. And you can see that its eyes light up as well. That is really cool. Let's set this down next to the battle damage T-Rex. Going back to Camp Cretaceous, our next biggest dinosaur figure is this Carnotaurus figure. And let's check it out compared to the super colossal version way up there. Check out the color difference. This one's a lot darker brown. They both have the damage on their nose though, which is pretty cool. And this Carnotaurus has a button on its tail to activate its jaw too. From Fallen Kingdom, we actually have a Carnotaurus figure as well. This one is a little bit smaller compared to the Camp Cretaceous Carnotaurus. You can see the size difference right there and the color difference as well. And this figure has a button on its back to activate its jaw and its neck as well. Next from Camp Cretaceous, we've got the Scorpios Rex figure. I think this is the largest Scorpios Rex figure that I have. It's got the yellow underbelly and the black sides and the darker black top. And this figure features some pretty cool attack buttons as well. One for the jaw and then one for slashing the arms too. Let's set this down next to the Carnotaurus. From the Fallen Kingdom toy line, we've got another Endoraptor figure that is slightly smaller than the Grab and Growl Endoraptor. It still has the same coloring and many of the same features, but this one doesn't have any attack buttons or anything like that, but it is super poseable. From Camp Cretaceous, we've got an Albertosaurus figure with the green and orange coloring. This figure reminds me a lot of a T-Rex, but it's got some differences in some spikes on the top of its head. And I think the shape of this dinosaur's head is a little bit different than a T-Rex as well. So let's go ahead and put this on the Camp Cretaceous line right here, next in size. Next in size from Fallen Kingdom is the Sukomimus figure in the blue and yellow coloring and it's got an action button on its back for the chomping or roaring action. This is a really colorful dinosaur. Let's put this right next to the Endoraptor figure. Next is the Camp Cretaceous Cryolophosaurus figure. 
This figure is also in a dark blue color, just like the Sukumimus, but it also has some orange along its back and its head as well. Next up is the Fallen Kingdom Allosaurus figure in the gray and yellow coloring. This figure features some cool detailing along the top of its head. It's got those really tall crown eyebrow-like things, and it's got an action button on its back for chomping its jaw open and shut. Let's set this down next to the Sukumimus. From Camp Cretaceous, we've got a Baryonyx figure in the two-toned green and the brown coloring along the top. This figure features a slide lever action to open and shut the jaw along with a ton of different sound effects. Now let's put this on the Camp Cretaceous line. Here is the Fallen Kingdom Ceratosaurus figure. This figure has some red, yellow, and black on its body, and it features movable arms, legs, and a tail, and the button on its back to operate the jaw. For Camp Cretaceous, we've got another Baryonyx figure, also with the green and brown, but slightly different coloring. And this figure just has a button on its back to activate the jaw and the sound effects too. On the Fallen Kingdom side, we've got a Metriacanthosaurus figure with this dark yellow and green coloring. This figure features movable arms and legs, and it has a button on the top of its back to activate the jaw. All right, that's looking good so far. Next for Camp Cretaceous, we've got the reflective Parasaurolophus figure. This figure features some really cool coloring. Look how shiny and reflective that is. It also has a tail that moves the head around, and there are adjustable legs on both the back and the front as well. This is the Fallen Kingdom Stegosaurus figure. It's in a teal bluish color. It's also got the lighter underbelly. And this figure features a slashing attack with its tail when you press down on its spine right there. Let's set this down next in the Fallen Kingdom line. For Camp Cretaceous, we've got a Sinoceratops figure in the green, tan, and kind of a darkish orange color. It's also got some yellow eyes, and this figure features a tail that activates the neck so you can move it around, and the sound effects as well. Um. For Fallen Kingdom, I believe that this is a Sinoceratops as well. It looks quite a bit different, it has some different coloring and some different horns on the front as well. And this figure features a button on its back that moves its head up and down. Here's another Sinoceratops figure, but this one is from Camp Cretaceous, and it's got some interesting coloring. The all black eyes, its body is mostly this light gray blue coloring with some tan detailing all over as well. And this figure features the tail that you can use to move its neck around as well. On the Fallen Kingdom side, I've got another Triceratops figure in the clay orange coloring, and it's got brown detailing along the top. This figure features some huge horns on its face and an action button on its back for a slashing or a roaring action. And here is the last Triceratops of this video. This one is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the brown and blue coloring, the huge horns in the front, and the tail that controls the head. Next in size for Fallen Kingdom is this Ankylosaurus figure. It's got the huge spikes coming out of its side, as well as the hard shell on top, and an action button along its back for swinging its tail back and forth. From Camp Cretaceous, we've got a Sarcosuchus figure with the purple, orange, red, and gray-blue coloring. This figure features a really long torso, a super long mouth, and some short stubby legs, as well as an action button on its tail to open and close the jaw and to move its head around too. Now we're getting down to the real small figures. This is the Velociraptor blue figure from Fallen Kingdom. And this features movable legs, arms, and you can open and close its mouth as well. I've also got a Velociraptor from Camp Cretaceous here. This one is a green with darker green striping. And this figure actually features an attack button on its back that moves its claws back and forth. Let's put it right there on the Camp Cretaceous line. For Fallen Kingdom, we've got a Stigimaloc figure with the orange and purple detailing. And this figure has an action with its tail used for headbutting. 
And let's put this right at the end of the Fallen Kingdom line. I've also got a Stiggy Malak figure for Camp Cretaceous as well. This one also has the clay coloring with the purple detailing, but this one does not feature an attack button with its tail to move its head back and forth for headbutting. And the last Fallen Kingdom figure in this collection is this Extreme Battle Damage Herrerasaurus. You can see that you can open and close it right there on the side. And for our final dinosaur is the Monolophosaurus from Camp Cretaceous. This figure features an action where you can move its tail to open and close its jaw. All right, there is our entire Camp Cretaceous versus Fallen Kingdom, biggest to smallest. Let's check out all these Camp Cretaceous figures from big to small. And our Fallen Kingdom from biggest to smallest. Today we're checking out all of my Indominus Rex figures from Jurassic World and we're going to be putting them side by side from biggest to smallest. So let's get started with the biggest one, the super colossal Irex figure. This figure is probably over three feet from the tip of its nose all the way to its tail. So this one is ginormous. Next, we've got the Destroy and Devour Irex, but this one is actually custom colored with the blue, the purple, and the orange striping. And my favorite part, the bright green eyes. And it has some action buttons. The first operates its arms, and the second operates its jaw. So let's set down this Irex next to the super colossal version. Look at that size difference. Next up, we've got another destroy and devour Irex, but this one is not custom colored. This is actually the coloring that it originally came in. It's got the classic darker coloring around its orange eyes. It's got plenty of texturing and spikes along its back. And of course the same action buttons on its back to operate its arms and its jaw too. And check it out, there's even some space in its mouth that it could probably fit a few miniature dinosaurs inside of its mouth. The next Irex that I've got is the Extreme Battle Damage Edition. You'll see that it's a pretty similar size to these other Destroy and Devour figures, but this one, instead of having a button that activates its arms, it has a button that activates the damage on the side with sound effects. Other than that, you can see it's got very similar coloring to the Destroy and Devour Irex, and of course it's got the button on its tail to activate the jaw. Next up, I've got a really unique looking Indominus Rex figure. This one was actually made by Hasbro, and this is a hybrid Indominus Rex figure. It's got tons of red all over its body and like lightning strike patterns almost. It's got a button on its side to activate the spines coming out of its back and you can move its arm to activate the motor that opens and closes its mouth too. Plus, check out these extra teeth inside its mouth that you can actually like kind of move around. I think they, they flip up when its mouth is open. It's pretty different compared to the Destroying Devour and all those other Irex figures. And let's see if we can stand this one up. It doesn't stand up too well usually. I might have to lean it against that other one. There we go. Next up in size is actually another Irex by Hasbro. This is the Indominus Rex that I believe was made for the first Jurassic World movie. And this one is quite a bit different from the Destroy and Devour ones because it's got a rubber neck. You can see its whole front face and its neck is like a rubber. And you actually open and close its mouth by moving its arms up and down. So it's kind of spring loaded. And this Irex is definitely smaller than the hybrid Irex. So we're gonna put this as the next biggest dinosaur, next in line. Next up in size is another figure made by Mattel. This Indominus Rex is very different looking compared to what we've seen so far entirely. It's got huge orange eyes, it's got some blue spike detailing running down its back, and it's got a really unique attack feature as well. What you do is you move its tail up and down and it actually swings its head in a circular motion all over, and it has some chomping actions as well. It's pretty wild looking. All right, let's put this interesting looking Indominus Rex right next to the Hasbro one. 
All right, now the figures are getting a little bit smaller. This is the Feeding Frenzy Indominus Rex from Hasbro. It's got some huge orange, yellow, and red eyes. It's got a ginormous head and a smaller body. And this figure actually has a few functions. You can use the tail to open up the mouth. And then when you have a piece of meat, which I couldn't find, unfortunately, you place it in its mouth and it clamps its mouth shut. Plus there is a button on the top of its head right here to activate more sound effects. Now this next figure is not officially from Jurassic World, but it is an Indominus Rex. This one is actually a model Indominus Rex made by some other brand. I can't remember the name of the brand. So this figure does look quite a bit different compared to the Mattel versions and even the Hasbro versions, but it still looks like an Indominus Rex. Next in size is another older Irex figure. I believe this one was by Hasbro as well. It's quite a bit different in size compared to the destroy and devour dinosaurs. It's got some battle damage on the side that you can open and close, and you can use the tail to chomp its mouth down too. So let's get this one next in line. This next one I believe was called like a bite and thrashers or something like that, and this one is pretty small. This one has some battle damage painted right on the side, and you can use the tail to move the head around and chomp its jaw as well. And this one is quite a bit smaller compared to the one that we just saw too. Look at that. And my last three Irex figures are all really small, so let's go take these down to the edge of the table. This first one is a Lego Irex. I believe it's a pretty old version, which is pretty cool. It's got the red eyes and some cool gray detailing and coloring on the sides. So let's stand this one up. Our next biggest is this silver reflective Indominus Rex, which is pretty cool. And I believe this one is by Mattel as well. So let's put this right next to the Lego Irex. And finally, the smallest Irex that I have is this clear Indominus Rex. It's got some really amazing detailing with the texturing, despite how small it is. And of course it doesn't have any coloring because the whole thing is completely see-through. So let's put this at the very end. Welcome to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we're checking out a collection of my Jurassic Park figures versus my Jurassic World Dominion figures. So these are my oldest figures versus my newest figures. Let's get started with this giant T-Rex from Jurassic Park. This is JP29. This figure is rubbery all over aside from its legs and its arms, and you can use the tail to swing its head back and forth. Over here is the Slash and Roar Giganotosaurus. This figure is pretty big. It's about the size of many of my T-Rex figures and it has two actions. The first button activates the torso for swinging back and forth. And the second button activates its jaw. Over here on the Jurassic Park side, we've got a Utah Raptor. This is JP22. This figure also has the all rubbery body aside from its arms and its legs. And it has a chomping action when you press down on its tail. And check it out, it's got pink eyes. I don't think I have another dinosaur with those color eyes. Next from Jurassic World Dominion, we've got the giant new T-Rex figure. This figure is huge and comes with a few features. First, you can move the tail back and forth, which swings its torso back and forth. And there's also a button on its jaw to activate opening and closing the jaw too. Over here from Jurassic Park, we've got another huge T-Rex figure. This figure has a rubbery body, just like all the other Jurassic Park T-Rexes. And this one actually has marbled eyes. Plus, this figure has a stomach compartment, so you can actually feed this dinosaur small dinosaurs, and then you can release them from the stomach down here. Next up from Jurassic World Dominion, we've got an Ampelosaurus figure. This figure has the clay red body with the brown detailing. It's got spikes all over its body and the tail controls the head. And there's a button to activate the jaw too. 
From Jurassic Park, this is JP35, and I actually can't remember the name of this species, so comment down below if you recognize which dinosaur figure this is. But it's got these interesting wing-like things coming off of its arms, it's also got some huge spikes coming out of its head and its back, and of course it's got a super long tail with those spikes at the very end as well. From Jurassic World Dominion, this is a Mega Raptor figure. This figure is red in the back and a dark gray blue color in the front, and it comes with an action that when you press down on its back, it chomps. Check out those super long claws on its hand too. Check this out, we've got a younger looking Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park. This is the JP06 figure. It's got some battle damage on the side, it's got a full rubber body, and it looks pretty full grown, but because it's a bit smaller, that's what makes me think it's a juvenile T-Rex. This is the Pyroraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the classic red coloring on its body with the black on its tail and its legs and some further detailing on its face too. This is a basic figure, so you can only move the arms, the legs, and the tail just a bit. This is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure. This dinosaur has some pretty bright coloring all over its body, and of course it's got the iconic red coloring around its face and on its back. And since this figure is from the Hammond Collection, it is super poseable, and you can move all the joints in all sorts of directions. Here is the Jurassic Park Stegosaurus figure. This is JP24. It's got some battle damage right on its shoulder up there, and some smooth green coloring throughout the rest of its body. And this figure actually has an action button. When you move this part up here, it swings its tail back and forth. From the Dominion series, we have the ginormous Therizinosaurus figure. This figure is mostly black, and it has some pretty cool detailing with all the feathers. And of course, it's got the iconic red stripe up its back, and those huge claws on its hand too. Check out how big those are. And this figure has an action where you can move the tail to control the torso and open and shut the jaw too. Check it out, I actually found a much smaller Therizinosaurus in this collection as well. It has much of the same coloring with the dark blue everywhere and the red on its back, but this figure is way smaller. Next from Jurassic Park is JP19, a Parasaurolophus figure. This is light tan with some darker striping along its back, and it's got the bright red along the back of its head too. Plus, it's got an action button on its back to move its legs for running. Here from Dominion, I've got two Ragosaurus figures. They look identical aside from their coloring. This first one is a dark blue color. It's got some lighter white on its chin and its neck as well. While this one is a light brown color with some dark blue detailing along its back and neck. And both have the same action button that when you press down on their back, they have a chomping action. Here is a ginormous Triceratops figure from the Jurassic Park collection. This is JP08. This one also has some battle damage right there on its shoulder and it's got the rubbery body, just like many of the other Jurassic Park figures. And when you press down on this figure's stomach, it actually lifts its head up as well. Next up, we've got a few Baryonyx figures from Jurassic Park. This one is JP63. They look identical aside from the coloring again. This one is a dark brown color with some brighter detailing, and this one is a bright yellow color with darker detailing along the top. And both these figures have the same action that when you press down on their leg, they twist their neck back and forth. Here is the Dominion Sound Surge Carnotaurus figure. Let's check out those sound effects. That's pretty cool. It's got some pretty plain coloring along its body, but you can still move the legs, the arms, and the tail as well. I've also got the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. This figure is about the same size as the Carnotaurus we just saw, and many of the same features. You can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, and it comes with some cool sound effects too. This next one, I believe, is called an Amargo Spinus. This is JP58. This is a really old figure. It's got some pretty cool detailing and coloring though. Plus, when you move the dinosaur's leg, you can see that the spines actually stick up on its back, on its neck, and it opens its jaw too. 
Here is a good old Triceratops from Jurassic Park. This is JP44. It's a smaller figure with the green body and the darker detailing on top. And when you move the leg on this figure, it lifts its head up too. Looks like I've got a few Atrociraptor figures in here. Check it out, they're all about the same size. This first one is a light tan color and is actually in the crawling or sneaking pose. Whereas these other two are just in the normal standing pose. This one I think is my favorite coloring because it's a lot brighter and pretty cool looking. Next from Jurassic Park, we've got another Velociraptor figure. This one is striped all over its body and it's got the light underbelly. And you can move the arms and the legs just a little bit. And the neck used to chomp downwards, but I think it's a little broken now. Check it out, I've got another Atrociraptor figure, but this one is a lot larger than the ones I just showed you. This one has the classic white and brown striping coloring and those awesome red eyes as well. But this is a basic figure, so you can only move the arms, the legs, and the tail just a little bit, and you can't open the jaw at all. Right over here, it looks like I've got a baby dinosaur. This is JP58, and this originally came in an egg that you can open up. And look, it's got those marbled eyes as well. That's a pretty cool feature. Here is another Velociraptor figure, but this one has a broken leg feature. Look at that, you can actually move its leg a little bit like that. Plus, you can move the rest of its body as well. The legs, the arms, and you can open and close the jaw too. This Jurassic Park figure, I believe, is called the Chasmosaurus. This is JP21. This looks kind of like a Triceratops, but it has some different features on the front of its body. And this figure has an action that when you move its leg, it lifts its head up. And it has sound effects too. Here is a small Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the dark green body with the orange detailing on top. This Dilophosaurus figure is from Jurassic Park, and it looks quite a bit different from the new Jurassic World Dilophosaurus figures, don't you think? This is the Extreme Battle Damage Coelurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the green body with the clay red detailing along its legs and its tail, and of course it's got the battle damage on its side that you can turn on and off. Right over here, we've got a Spinosaurus figure from Jurassic Park. This figure is pretty bright with that bright green coloring right next to the dark gray color. And it has an action button that when you move its arm, it opens and closes its jaw. Over here, this is our last Dominion figure. This is the extreme battle damage Velociraptor. Check out that battle damage on its side. And last of all, we've got a Jurassic Park Velociraptor. This is a very classic figure. It's got the brown sides with the black detailing on top and the jaw that you can open and close by pressing on its head. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we're gonna to be checking out some of Jurassic World's most popular dinosaurs. I've got two whole shelves here set up with some of those popular dinosaurs. So let's get started at the bottom over here with some of these super colossal figures. This first one is actually the Jurassic World Dominion Super Colossal T-Rex. It's got the darker body with the brown and black detailing and the yellow eyes. It's pretty cool. Right next to it, we've got the Atrociraptor figure. This figure is a little bit smaller than the T-Rex, but it has some of that cool striping that you can see in the movie. And right next to it, we've actually got the Super Colossal Velociraptor Blue with the iconic blue stripe and the light green body too. That's pretty cool. And look at all those teeth too. Right next to Velociraptor Blue, we've got Carnotaurus Toro. Check out that battle damage right there on the nose. That's really cool. And it's got the two huge horns on its head and the iconic brown and clay red coloring on its body. Over here on the next lower shelf, I've got all T-Rexes. T-Rexes are obviously some of the most popular Jurassic World figures. This first one is a light blue-gray color. It's got some red eyes and a huge set of teeth. There's also this orange T-Rex right here that I believe came out during the Fallen Kingdom movie, and it's just as big as this one. I've also got a camo super colossal T-Rex. This one's a bit older, so it is more fragile, but it also has some battle damage on its side as well. And then the last super colossal T-Rex that I have on this shelf is this awesome fire T-Rex. Check out that coloring that it has on it and those creepy white eyes too. 
That is so cool. Moving up a level, let's see what other figures I have in my most popular collection. I've got some Atrociraptor figures right here. I've got an orange one. I've got this tan crawling one. I've got two white and brown striped ones right there. And this one is actually a custom colored one that I did pretty recently. You should go check out the video where I painted it if you haven't seen it yet. Next up, we've got some classic Stegosaurus figures of varying colors. I've got a teal one, I've got a green one, and I've got a gray-blue one set up on this shelf right now. And they all look pretty similar in design and their shape. It looks like the coloring is pretty much the biggest difference between them. Then, right next to those ones, I've got a few Triceratops figures on this shelf too. This first one is the Hammond Collection, so it's pretty cool with the color detailing. Look at how worn those horns are on the front. This one in the back here is actually one that I custom colored. So this one is also in that custom painting video that I did a while back. You should check it out. Right next to the Triceratops, I have the Therizinosaurus figures. I first got this miniature Therizinosaurus with a little bit less detailing, but then I got this huge one that's got the gray claws, the awesome red stripe on its back, and a few action buttons on it as well. Right next to that, I've got one of the stars of the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. These are the Giganotosauruses. This first one is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus, so it's quite a bit smaller, but it has some pretty cool sound effects. And I've also got this larger one that has a slashing and tearing action using the action buttons on its tail. It's really cool. And moving on to the next shelf, I've got a few Endoraptor figures from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom movie. There's this one on the far left that's really poseable. I've also got the basic one hidden in the back here. It can move a lot less, but it still looks really cool. And then I've got my largest Endoraptor figure that actually has a few action buttons. It can open and close its jaw, and it can swing its arms back and forth too. Right beside those ferocious predators, I've got more carnivores. These are the Carnotaurus figures. I've got Carnotauruses of all shapes and colors. I've got a small baby looking one. I've also got the dark brown. There's some clay red ones. Also got some others in the back over there too. So I have quite a few Carnotaurus figures. And right next to that, I've got some of my largest Indominus Rex figures. This first Indominus Rex here is the Battle Damage Edition. You can see the slashes on its side that you can turn on and off and reveal the red underneath. I've also got one from the original Jurassic World movie right here. It actually is pretty rubbery, which is interesting. And I've also got these smaller baby looking Indominus Rex and the classic huge figure right here too. On the next level are some of my coolest T-Rex figures. And you can bet that these are super popular. I've got this gray and brown T-Rex with the button on the top of its head to open and close the jaw. There's also this light brown one that's probably my favorite because you can actually control it using the tail to open and close its mouth and to move its neck around too. It's super realistic looking. I've also got the Hammond Collection T-Rex, which is one of the scariest looking T-Rexes I have, I think because of its eyes. They kind of look like they're glowing almost. And right next to that, I've also got the Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. So this is one of the newest T-Rexes I have, other than this Hammond Collection T-Rex right here. And right next to these dinosaurs, I've got a big group of Spinosaurus figures. These are one of my favorite species, and I've got quite a few different colors. Looks like I've got three colors here, and then I've also got the miniature version that's the same color as this one up here. All these figures are really cool, plus they all have the button on the top of their head to open and close the jaw. That's so cool. Right next to the Spinosauruses, we've got some smaller but still ferocious predators. I've got some Baryonyx figures right here. This one is from the Hammond Collection, and I've also got a few others that are gray, blue in color. I've got a green one right here in the back as well. Right next to those, I've got some of my favorite Allosaurus figures. This first one is green, it's got some red and white on it. There's also a tan and blue one. And my favorite one is this huge Allosaurus figure that I bought pretty recently. This is the Battle Damage Edition. So you can actually open up the Battle Damage on its side and close it back up, which is really cool. Plus, this Allosaurus figure is probably twice the size of these other Allosaurus figures that I have as well. Look at the difference between them. And check it out right next to it. You probably already saw it a little bit. This is a Mosasaurus figure. This figure is ginormous. It has a huge jaw that you can open and close. 
and you can adjust the flippers as well. Plus, it's got some pretty cool coloring as well. It's dark blue, but it has these white specks all over it just to give it a bit more texture. And it's super bumpy on the top of its back too. It's got all these ridges all along it, which looks really cool. All right, moving on to the top shelf. Over here, we've got a few Ceratosaurus figures. All these figures are pretty small compared to T-Rexes and stuff like that, but they're still pretty cool and they're pretty different with their coloring. This one's a super bright red. I've got this brown one and I've got a gray and red one in the back way over there. But an even bigger predator from Jurassic World is the Scorpios Rex. I've got two types on the shelf right here. This first one is the larger figure and it has two action buttons one for the arms and one for the jaw. And I've also got this smaller one that's like a dark green color. This one doesn't have any action buttons, but it is still super poseable. You can move its arms and its elbows and its legs. It's really cool how you can pose it in all different ways. Right next to that, I've got a few Ankylosaurus figures, all with different coloring. Check that out. I've got a clay red one, I've got a brown one, I've got a yellow one, and they all have those super long spikes on the sides, and then the shorter spikes along the top of their shell. And over here, I've got a couple Dimetrodon figures. I bet you recognize these from the Jurassic World Dominion movie. This figure on the right here is actually an extreme battle damage, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw at the bottom. You can turn it on and off, just like that. Really cool. And I love the color difference between these. Although they're pretty similar, I like that it's uh, a little bit different. On the next shelf over here, I've got a big collection of Velociraptors. But this isn't even all of the Velociraptors that I own. I own so many, but some of these are some of the coolest, I think. I've got the Amber Collection Velociraptor Blue right here. I've got a bunch more smaller ones of different colors. There's a brown, a red, some green ones. Here's another Amber Collection Velociraptor and a smaller version of Velociraptor Blue at the very end. Right next to that, we've got another star of the Jurassic World Dominion movie. These are the Pyroraptors. I've got two right here that are pretty similar looking, but this one actually has battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off. It's pretty small, but you can see that red click back and forth, which is a really cool feature. And then there's also this giant Pyroraptor. It's a basic figure, so it can't do too much. Its jaw doesn't open or close or anything like that, but it is a whole lot bigger than these other figures, which is really cool. And finally, over here, we've got some awesome Dilophosaurus figures of a bunch of different colors. A lot of them are green, but you can see on their frills, they've got some red, some of them got yellow, some of them got purple. It's really cool. And of course, I've got this huge Dilophosaurus figure right here. It is also a basic figure, just like the Pyroraptor. So you can't open and close the mouth, but you can move the frills and you can move the legs and the tail as well. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.